Hallelujah. Well, let's get started this morning by getting your Bible, lift it up in your car, and we'll have our confession. Father God, we thank you. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Today, I will be taught the uncompromised, the unchanging, the infallible, indestructible seed of the Word of the living God. For my Bible, I said my Bible is God's Word speaking to me. Amen. Look to your neighbor or someone sitting in the vehicle with you. Say, my Bible is God's Word speaking to you. So smile real big because you look a lot better that way. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. And we're going to pick up on our subject as we begin to minister last Sunday on the, the joy, living a life of joy. And it's not a life of just being happy. I'm talking about a life of real joy. Getting a revelation of the joy of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us. God is a good God. Amen. I said God is a good God. He is wonderful. Praise the Lord. And we give him all the praise and all the glory. He said always rejoice. Always. Not just sometimes. But we need to always rejoice in spite of what we're going through. We always rejoice in the Lord. And again, he says, he reminds us, Paul says, again, he says to rejoice. So we need to just keep rejoicing and praising him. It's not talking about just having a smile on your face. It's not talking about getting happy if you get a new car, you get a new suit, you get a new dress, or get a new house, or whatever. It's talking about the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we need to rejoice in that every single day. Because, see, God is the answer to all of our challenges in life. Whatever we're going through, and this is what happened right now with the virus. And so the virus has no place on you and I as children of God. We are protected by the blood of the Lamb. Does anybody agree with me this morning? protected by the blood of the Lamb. God gave us a word here uh, several months back as I was ministering uh, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit spoke to us and said uh, there's going to be a, a, a changing take place, a shifting taking place. And uh, at the first part of that I didn't really understand what he's talking about but we knew God is going to make some things happen and even do enemies behind all this, God is going to turn all this around for our good. There's a shifting, there's a shifting taking place, and you and I are going to still see an outpouring of the glory of God. I believe there's a tremendous awakening of the Holy Ghost, the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's one thing uh, to, to know about Jesus, it's another thing to know him personally. And you and I, as children of God, we know the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a personal God to us. And He is going to bring us out of this thing. It's going to be better than ever before because we are children of God. God says in Ephesians chapter 1, He says we were blessed before the foundation of the world. I am blessed regardless of what you're dealing with, regardless of what you're uh, having to uh, deal with on your jobs or deal with in your homes and schools and so forth. I am blessed, and you are blessed, and we will stay blessed because we have been sealed. In uh, Ephesians chapter 1 says, we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Thank God the seal of God is on our life today. Amen. Uh, turn your Bibles, if you would, please, to uh, Psalms 27. In Psalms 27, we look at this verse of Scripture here and begin reading with verse 1, I believe it is. Psalms 27. And uh, we'll read verse 1, the song of David here. You know, the life of David, there's more talk, there's more in the Bible about David's life than anybody other than Jesus. Jesus is from cover to cover. David has so much been said about David. David was a man after God's own heart. Uh, and it says here in Psalms 27, verse 1, The Lord is my light. He is my salvation, or He is my deliverer. Whom shall I fear, or what should I be afraid of? He said, the Lord is the strength of my life. I said, he said, the Lord is the strength of my life. I'm strong in the Lord. Amen. We need to have a revelation 
that we don't lose our strength because of battles. We get stronger in spite of the battles. Just like Jesus, when he went and fasted and prayed for 40 days, he, he, came, he came out of that fasting prayer stronger than when he went in, more full of God than when he went in. And it says here in verse 2, when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies, my foes, they stumbled and they fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will not be I will be confident. Thank God we are confident in Him. I can rejoice in the Lord because I'm confident in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm confident in this Word. This Word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I said this Bible is the same yesterday. The Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It never changes. It never changes. I am. I am what God says I am. And I can do what God says I can do. And I have what God says I can have. We have no lack. We prosper in times of famine. We prosper in times of lack. Why? Because we sow in times of plenty. And when we've been obedient to the Word of God, He'll, He'll bless us and keep blessing us because we are faithful to His Word. Verse 4 says this, One thing I have desired the Lord, that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. He shall hide me in his shelter. He shall hide me under the mighty wings of the Holy Ghost. In the secret place of the tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high above upon a rock, you and I are sitting up high today. We're not looking down. We're looking up. We're getting up every day. And we're praising God every day for His goodness and for His mercy. Because God be for us, who can be against you? God be for us, who can be against us? Glory to God. Amen. He says here in verse 6, And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies and all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifice of joy, sacrifice of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing and praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Yes, there is a sacrifice sometimes. And we have to just stir up that gift of God that's on the inside of us because we're hearing bad news on this side, bad news on that side. But I'm telling you one thing. Stop listening to all the bad news and start reading about the good news. You have, you have opportunity right now to just soak yourself. We just need to soak ourselves in the Word of God. I know a lot of people love to take tub baths, but I'm a shower man myself. So a lot of people like to just soak themselves in the tub maybe for 30 minutes to an hour or so. But I like to soak myself in the Word of God because there is refreshing in His Word. We are being refreshed every day in the Word of the living God. Amen? Romans chapter 15. If you'll turn with me, please. In Romans chapter 15. And verse 13 says this. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy. Fill with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Ghost. Do you have the Holy Ghost in you? Hold your horn. I see somebody over here got a sign hanging up the window. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are praising God. Amen. Because he said, let me read this scripture again. It's so powerful. It's writing to the Apostle Paul in Romans 15, 13. Now, may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you shall abound. Do you believe you're going to abound? We are abounding in the Holy Ghost. In power and in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then it says here in chapter 14 and verse 17, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking with righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The Bible is full about being full of the Holy Ghost, being full of the joy of the Lord. 
The Lord is my joy because I have the Lord living on the inside of me. Amen. Praise God. Just look over here, 1 Peter chapter 1. Go back to your right of your Bible. Go to James and go to Peter. Peter chapter 1. And uh, let's, let's look at this verse 3 here. He says, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that not our faith, that will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you and I, who are kept by the power of God through faith. How? We are kept by the power of God through faith. Feed your faith every day with the Word of God. Get strong in the power of the Word of God. So when darts are thrown of you, you got your whole armor on, it will just bounce off of you because you are filled and you have the armor of God on your life. He says here in verse 5, who are kept by the power of God, how through faith, for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice. Notice verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice. Why? Because you got faith in Christ. You got faith in this word. Amen. No weapon. I said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Because greater is he. Amen. No weapon. No weapon. And he says, in this you greatly, greatly rejoice. Remember what uh, Philippians 4, 4 says? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I said, rejoice. And right here in verse 6, he says, in this you greatly rejoice. Though now for a little while, if you need be, you have grieved, you have been grieved by different kinds of tests and trials. There's opportunities to grieve because of what this world's going through. But see, here's the thing of it is, I'm not going through it, I've done going through it. I'm not looking to win, I have already won. won. Jesus paid the price for you and I 2,000 years ago. He has made conquerors out of us. He's made winners out of you and I. Because we are children of God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a living God. Amen. Thank God for that. Don't be feeding yourself on CNN news, Fox news. Don't be feeding yourself all the time on bad news. We need to feed ourselves on some good news. Amen. Because they're, power. they're, because they're using the airwaves to try to divide the body, try to divide, divide the nations, divide the world. To see through Christ Jesus, we are one in Him. We shall not be divided. I'm not going to let anything divide me, whether you're Republican, whether you're a Democrat, whether you're an Independent. I'm not going to let any of that bother or divide me from you because we are brothers and sisters in the Holy Ghost. You are my brothers. You are my family, praise God. I said, You are my family, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for that word. Amen. He says here, in this, verse 6, you greatly rejoice. So now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by different kinds of tests and trials. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire. Your faith will be tested. We find in James chapter 1, verse 2, he says it's your faith that's going to be tested. You're not going to be tested. The devil will come and try to test your faith and try to get you to doubt what God's Word says. We are not doubters. We are believers. They throw all they want to at us. We are stronger today than we were yesterday because of the Word of God. And we're going to be stronger tomorrow than we are today because my future is brighter than my yesterday. Thank God my future is brighter than my today. Why? Because my future is God has got my future in his hands. I said, God has my future in his hands. Thank God. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Your life, your life is in the hands of God. Your faith shall be strong in him, rejoicing in him. He says, verse 7, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it's tested by fire, 
may be found. Let your faith be found what? The praise, the glory, and honor in the revelation of Jesus Christ. You have to get a revelation of who Christ is. Get a revelation of this word because this word will change everything. This word will keep your feet on the solid rock. This word will help you through the darkest night, the darkest day of your life. The word will always bring you through. Why? Because the word is light. The word is light. As long as you are feeding on the word of God, you are feeding on the light of God, and you'll always live in the light. It matters not if the world is dark, if the nighttime is dark, I'm always living in the light because of who Christ is on the inside of me. He said, be found. How are you going to be found? I want to be found praising God. I want to be found honoring God, honoring Him, putting Him first. You honor God by putting Him first place in your life every day. Don't let nothing shake your faith. Don't let anything shake your faith. He said, and give Him glory. Somebody needs to give him some glory, amen. For the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. And verse 8 says, Whom having not seen, you love. Whom having not seen. We haven't seen God, but we love him because we believe in the word of God. I believe I'm born again. I believe I am filled with the Holy Ghost. And I believe Jesus has my back, has my front, as my whole being in his hands. Why? Because he is the God that's more than enough. Having whom having not seen, you love. Do anybody love Jesus this morning? I say, does anybody love Jesus today? Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, you don't see him, yet believe him, you do what? Rejoice. You don't rejoice because you see him. You rejoice because you believe he exists. He exists, and we rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of joy, full of excitement, full of life. You should be full of life today. Oh, don't be, don't be dragging around, holding your head all down. And, and uh, one thing I do want to uh, challenge you, don't be complaining. Don't be complaining the way things are going. Don't be complaining about your government. Don't be complaining about your neighbor. Don't be complaining about your job. Don't be complaining about anything. Give God some praise. Stay in faith. Stay in faith. Amen. So stop complaining. Stop complaining to your spouse about how things are going. I'm telling you, things are going good. I said, things are going good. I'm telling you, we're coming out of this thing with a louder shout than we've ever shouted before in our life. There's a, there's a move of God. There's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Joel says this in Acts chapter 2. There's going to be coming an outpouring of God's Spirit upon all flesh. Glory to God. And we're seeing right now things are happening all over the world. People are getting before God. People are repenting. And they're receiving Jesus as the Lord and Savior. It's the same as things has to call some people to, put, to uh, look to God. And I'm telling you, I don't need a disaster to make me look to God. I don't need a virus to increase my faith in the Word of God because I'm already prepared. I am prepared for anything the devil throws at me. You need to be prepared of any bad news that comes your way. I see so many people when they get bad news, they fall apart. Just crumble. Just give up. Should I quit? I'm not going in the party. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to give some honor, praise, and glory. Honor, praise, and glory. Honor, praise, and glory. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Amen. He says here, verse 8. Whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believe him, you rejoice with joy and inexpressible and full of glory. This should be the outcome of your faith. The outcome of your faith is joy, glory, peace, and honor. I'll tell you, God 
God is with us. God is with us. He's not forsaken you. Your ever need. I have been so proud of the family of Victory Life Church because I have heard nothing but good news. Some of you is even getting increased through this. Some of you getting raises through this. Every need's been met in your life. Praise God. yet to come. You haven't seen nothing yet. I mean, God's turning this thing around. It's turning around, praise God. We're going to be back in this house. We know the building isn't the church, but we have fun in the building with the church. Let me say that again. The building is not the church, but we have fun in the building with the church. Because you are the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the we'll believe in God, our first service inside. I'm telling you, I don't know whether they get more excited being out here or not because I think you guys have been awesome. You guys have been so excited and blowing your horns and blinking your lights and putting on your wiper blades and just expressing uh, your time of excitement and enthusiasm. We are being refreshed every day. I challenge you, I started to say a moment ago, I challenge you every single day to get up and just start praising God for a minute. I mean, the first thing you do when you hit the floor, don't say I need a cup of coffee. Don't say I need my coffee, my newspaper. You need to say, I'm gonna dance before God. I remember, uh, I remember years ago reading, and I'm, and I'm still reading today, uh, Lester Sumbrall, he said this, he said uh, he went to visit Smith Wigglesworth one time, and he thought to Smith Wigglesworth, he said, this is where work. What's, what's your routine every day when you get up? He said, well, the first thing I do when I get up every day, I get up and I praise God, hilariously, dance before God, 10 to 15 minutes. Every day, put God first place. Every day. Then I get the mail, read it, and then I get my Bible out and begin to meditate. Every time he sat down to eat a meal, he wouldn't know to pray over the meal. He would take his Bible out and read a scripture while he's there at the table, he's made to have a meal. He was a man sold out to God. He was in his 80s, still dancing. He, he died, went to heaven when he was 87 years old. But in his 80s, he was still dancing and rejoicing before the Lord. Don't let your age stop you from getting excited about the things of God. So I said, well, somebody said, I'm getting too old to pray. No, you're just at the right age. You are at the right age to praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. I said, you are at the right age to praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Uh, turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4. Let me look in here in the New King Version. Romans chapter 4. The Bible, the Bible is so good. I mean, it's so good you just probably need to sleep with it. Don't take the Bible to bed with you. <laughs> somebody, said, somebody said, you're crazy. I'm crazy over Jesus, I tell you. I'm crazy over Jesus. Glory to God. See, some people think that you're foolish when you begin to talk about the love of God. Some people think you've lost your mind when you want to get out and begin to praise God and lift up your hands. And somebody said, don't you know what's going on around you? I know what's going on around me, sure. But I know what's going on around me on the inside. I know what's happening on the inside. The greater one is in me, praise God. What's going on on the outside? I'm not concerned about that. All I need to know is what's happening on the inside. And what's going on in the inside is joy, peace, happiness, excitement, enthusiasm. That's the joy of the Lord is my strength. Let me share this familiar passage of scripture in the writings of the Apostle Paul in the book of uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 19. Not being weak in faith, not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. Now, I'll, over the years, I've told you this to stretch the knot out. 
because he's human, he had to consider it, but he didn't allow what he saw to change his faith in God. God told Abraham, at the age of 75, you're going to have a son through Sarah, your wife, who's been buried. And uh, Abraham believed it. I guarantee you, though, the enemy came to him and told him, how's that going to work? You're an old man. Your wife is an old woman. But see, God wanted to prove himself. He let them get to be almost 100 years old. Abraham was 100. Not, Sarah was 90 years old. And he was proving to him that he's God. Of El Shaddai. He's the God that's more than enough. And Abraham said this in the life of the Apostle Paul. Not being weak in faith, he did consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. In the deadness of Sarah's room, he did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Giving glory to, he was strong in faith giving glory to God. He was strong in faith, doing what? Getting glory to God. When you begin to give God glory, you get stronger in your faith. When you begin to praise Him and rejoice in the wonderful name of Jesus, your faith will get strong. That's how Abraham walked by faith 25 years because he was giving God praise. He was giving God praise. He was giving God honor. He was giving God glory. And he did not waver and the promises of God. He believed what the Bible said. He believed what God told him. He didn't have the Bible like you and I have it today. God spoke to him, and he believed God. God said, Abraham, get out of the earth of Chaldees. Leave this place. I got a better place for you. I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost is telling us we're coming, we're leaving this place that we're in right now, and we're coming out, and we're seeing the light we're seeing the blessing of God. We're seeing the anointing of God. We're seeing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There's an awakening taking place. There's a shifting that's taking place. We've been shifted into a bad situation. But in this bad situation, it's you and I as children of God. God's going to shift us right out of this mess. And we're going to come out better than we've ever come out before. We're going to use that man. Declare his praise. Declare his righteousness. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life is in the power of the tongue. What have you been saying? What have you been talking about? What have you been saying to your spouse every day? Are you complaining? Oh, you got real quiet on me right there. Are you complaining? You need to be happy. You need to encourage one another. I'm telling you, the way the situation has been the last few weeks, you find out just how much in love you are with each other. I see you'll find out just how much you are in love with each other. I heard somebody say not too long ago, during this situation, they had to be eating together as a family. They hadn't been doing that because they've been working so much and coming in late and everybody's eating separately, watching TV and eating. Now, through this situation, all now are eating at the table. And the, and, the, and the mama began to count. They count her husband, count her children. And he, she looked to her husband and said, Honey, I think we got one more child more than we thought we had. See, that's what happens in life. We don't really know what's around you. We don't need to get so busy when this thing is over with that we forget who God really is. We've got to continue to give him time, give him praise, give him honor. And David, you know, in 2 Samuel chapter 6, I'm not going to read it to you right now. We'll pick up on this next week. But David danced before God. His wife, Michael, came out and made fun of him. What are you doing showing yourself in front of all these maid servants? David was in his, what they call underwear. We call it underwear. It was ephod back in those days, what they called it. But David was out there whirling before God, dancing before God. Then he said on down a little bit, he said, I'm not concerned about it because they see me as king and you see me as a man. That's the difference. When people see you dancing, some of them may make fun of you because they don't know about the king that lives on the inside of you. When I'm dancing, I want you to see the king. When I'm praising God, I want you to see the king. The king, the God, the El Shaddai, lives inside of me. He calls me to dance. He called me to praise God. I'll never forget when I first got saved, 
I got saved in a Baptist church. But you know when I got saved, God put so much joy inside of me. He forgave me from so much. I was, I was so bad, the bad looked good. I'm telling you, when God saved me in a Baptist church, one of the first things I did was give him praise. Now, nobody in the Baptist church that I was born to, I never saw nobody raise their hands and praise God. But I would do it every service. You know what the pastor did? He talked to me one day after church. He said, would you mind making the announcements for me? And I was terrified. I said, sure. I never said no. I don't know the word no when it comes to serving God. I don't know the word no. I said, yeah, I'll make the announcements for you. When I got up there to make the announcements, before I made the announcements, I'm in the Baptist church there running about 400 people. I said, before I make these announcements, I just want to praise God. And I thought half the church was going to fall out. I just praise you, God. That's my nature. I didn't do it to spite anybody because I just thought that was what I was supposed to do. Give them some praise. Did you know after that, people started praising God? Praising God, lifting up their voice, lifting up their hands. But from day one, the moment I got saved, my wife will tell you, I've always been one to praise God. I am determined not to be shaken. I have opportunities to be shaken. But when those opportunities try to rise itself up against me, I just stop for a moment and begin to praise Him. I just begin to glorify Him. Just something the other day began to get on my mind. And I stopped for a moment. I said, I will not allow that to happen. I refuse to let that happen. And so I'm just going to put in my mind, I'm going to put in my mind good thoughts. I'm casting down every evil imagination and exalting self against the knowledge of God if you don't praise him, I'm going to praise him. If you don't praise him, God says, the rocks will cry out. The rocks, I don't want no rocks taking my place. I don't want any rocks taking my place. I'm going to praise him. Amen. God is so good. God is so good. I love that song, that song this morning. God is good. God is a wonderful good. Amen. Let me pray. Father, we are so thankful. Thankful for those watching live on stream. Thank God for those that are watching on Facebook. We thank God for those that are here this morning, and we just thank God that the Holy Spirit is moving mightily in their hearts today. And I pray they leave here today and they are rejoicing and praising God in every single thing they do. Give God some praise and glory and honor. And my prayer today is if there's someone under the sound of my voice listening to us or watching us on Facebook or watching us on live stream, if you're not born again, it's so easy to get born again. The Bible says that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I'm going to, I'm going to pray this prayer. You pray with us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for dying for me 2,000 years ago. And on the third day, you arose from the grave. And I receive you right now into my life. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me of my sin and all my sins. In Jesus' name I receive. Amen and amen. Now, what did you say sin and sins? The main sin is rejecting Christ. And the other sin is the little thing you do. But that's not the problem. Jesus, rejecting Jesus, is the real sin that's behind it. Praise God.